to tonight's Bible lesson, Identity Theft. Identity Theft, the true identity of the so-called African American. Now, why is this so important for us to discuss tonight, brothers and sisters? Again, America calls this month, February, Black History Month. And Black History Month is not referring to the African that came over here on his own. It's referring to those persons that were sons and the daughters of slaves that were brought over here in the holes of ships in chains. That's who it is referring to. See, the African that lives in Africa that comes over here, maybe he's from Liberia or she's from Liberia. They say, well, I'm a Liberian American. They don't say I'm African American. The man or woman from Ghana who comes to live over here in America, they say I'm Ghanaian American. They don't say I'm African American. See, Africa is the name of the continent. But there are 54 nations, about 54 nations on the continent. Which nation do we belong to or we come from? Well, we can trace through the Bible, which is the best history book that you can go through and go to to find out the answers to all of these questions. Now, we're going to start this thing off, brothers and sisters, at Amos, the third chapter. Israel is the only nation of people that God established a relationship with. That's why we as a people suffer the most. Could it be that the people that are called African American are the true Israelites of the Bible? Let's go to Amos 3 and 1. Amos 3 and 1. And it reads, well, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Amos 3, verses 1 and 2. Israel, it says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So who is he talking to? He's talking to the children of Israel. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Now, was Israel the only family on the earth? And no, brothers and sisters. But he said that Israel was the only family that I have known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, though, here's the thing. Therefore, I will punish you. For all of your sins, all of your iniquity. So what did Israel do, brothers and sisters? But before we get into that, let's go ahead and retrace this thing, which is what we got to do to order in order to establish the true history, biblical black history, the true history of the African-American and how our identity was taken away. Now, man wasn't smart enough not to break the Lord's commandments. But although man had lied, not killed yet, but lied, Satan told the first lie, brothers and sisters, and God killed an animal in which he clothed Adam and Eve with coats of skin. That was the first physical death in the Bible in which, and you can read it in Genesis 3, See, man put fig leaves over themselves or leaves over themselves because they knew the law. They couldn't kill. But after man had sinned, blood had to be shed. So God killed an animal in which he took the coat of skin off of the animal and covered Adam and Eve's private parts, brothers and sisters. That's where he got the coats of skin from. So why do Adam get blamed and not Eve. Adam represents both of them, brothers and sisters. At one point, both Adam and Eve were called Adam. Eve didn't have a name. Her name was Adam at one point. Let's go and look at this. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. We're going to go through the whole genealogy. 
today, brothers and sisters. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. It says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created man and the likeness of God made he him. That sounds like Genesis, right? Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. He called their name Adam. So both man and woman was covered under the same name. Almost like it is when you get married and the woman takes on your last name. But now let's go back. Let's go, let's go to Genesis 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Genesis 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. It says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife. Don't mean he just met her, brothers and sisters. It means that he had sex with her. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. So no woman conceives by somebody just meeting her. Adam knowing her means that he slept with her. And Adam knew Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process, and, and, and in the process of time, that's very important because we don't know how much time had passed during this time. But it says, and in the process of time, what happened during that process? Did they have more children? Well, we know that they had more children. But it says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect for Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are you angry? And why has thy countenance fallen? You know how people frown up in the face? That's your countenance, your face. So he could tell that Cain, according to the look on his face, was angry, brothers and sisters. Let's go down to verse 16 and 17. And it says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of, land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. It didn't say Cain found a wife. It says, and Cain knew his wife. So the female member of his family that he took with him, when he left out of the presence of the Lord, he had sex with her. That's why it says, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and built a city, and called the name of that city after the name of his son Enoch. So here it is now, Cain has been disinherited. He takes one of the female members of his family and goes into the land of Nod. He has sex with her and she begins to bear him children. So now we got Cain and his seed. And now we got Adam. Who had another son named Seth, brothers and sisters. And let's go down to verse 26. I'm sorry, 25 and 26. We still at Genesis 4, 25 and 26. It says, and Adam knew his wife again. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, she has appointed me another seed of Abel instead of Abel whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos. Then, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. All right? So now we got Adam and Seth's seed because Cain killed Abel. Cain was disinherited. But Cain went off and began to have children. And they began to have children. And they got a whole another nation and seed that's in disinherited. But here it is now. Cain, I'm sorry, Adam starts over with Seth. So we got the seed of Cain and Seth, and then we got the seed, I'm sorry, we got the seed of Adam and Seth, then we got the seed of Cain. Two different seeds on the earth right now, brothers and sisters. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We got to go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. 
Now, if you live today, you are a descendant of one of Noah's three sons. But let's go to where God said, I'm, I'm done with this thing. I'm getting rid of everybody on this earth. Except Noah and his sons and their wives. So let's go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's read a little bit about this. And we're going to kill one of the old traditions that angels had sex with women and he had giant babies and all that stuff. We're going we're gonna to kill that right now. Let's go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Genesis 6, 1 through 14. It says, and it came to pass. You see how the Bible moves in history and in the process of time. And it came to pass. So here it is now. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. Who are these men that this is referring to? That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wise all they choose. Again, there's only two seeds on this earth. And there's something that you need in order to have children. You must have male and female organs. And you must have sperm and the egg. Angels don't have organs, brothers and sisters. Male organs. And they don't have sperm. They are spirit beings, brothers and sisters. So again, it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the first face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. So this is Cain's seed that daughters were born into. That the sons of God, which, is the, which are the descendants of Adam and Seth, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, which, are the, which were the um, daughters of Cain, that they were fair and they took them wise of all which they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And that's why today you never hear or read or see anyone that goes beyond a hundred and twenty years of age. Verse four, it says there were giants in the earth in those days. Didn't say that giants were born. To these sons of God that slept with these daughters of men and married these daughters of men. It just said there were giants in the earth in those days, meaning tall people. Right. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bear children to them, the same talking about their children, the same became mighty men. Which were of old men of renown. So the only thing that we can get out of this and claim is that when the sons of God slept with the daughters of men, they bear children that were mighty men, because that's what the Bible says. Show me in here where it says that giants were born to these sons of God that slept with these daughters of men and don't say it. Where did you get it from? And again, all you got to do is read verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Can you imagine the Lord looking at his, at his creation was like, I don't even know why I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then it says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. So now Noah's making an ark. 
Well, why are we going here? Why are we dealing with this? Brothers and sisters, it is important that we deal with this because now we're dealing with the beginning of the genealogy of not only Israel, brothers and sisters, coming into that, but now we're coming into how the world was spread apart and the nations were spread apart by Noah's three sons. Let's go ahead and continue reading. Let's go down to verse 17 and 18, and it reads, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. What covenant? Remember, God had a covenant with Abraham. So if he's continuing his covenant, then... Come on, brothers and sisters. Abraham ain't around yet, though. So God had a covenant before Abraham. So we got two covenants that's going on, but we got to have somebody that's going to give birth to Abraham. God says right here, I will continue my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, you, your sons and your wife and your son's wives with thee. So now let's go to the ark, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the ark. There is no Hebrew at this time. There is no Israel at this time, brothers and sisters. There's only the seed of Adam and Seth. God had a covenant with Adam and Seth. Walk in my ways, stay in my ways, Adam, Seth. Noah is a descendant of Adam and Seth. So let's go. Let's continue reading. Let's go to Genesis. Now we got to go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, and find out the order of things. Who are the Gentiles? Who are the Hamites? Who are the Shemites? And who is Israel? Now we got to come from one or the other. We got to come from Shem, Ham, or Japhet as so-called African Americans. Which one did we come from? Which one did Israel come from? Let's find out. Let's go to Genesis, the 10th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Genesis 10. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. It says, Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Now, let's just deal with one son. This son is called Japheth or Japheth. Okay? We're only going to deal with him. But let's find out who comes from him. It says the sons of Japheth, Gomar and Magog, which is your Russian area, Madai and Javan, which is your Greeks and, and your Greek, your Greek and um, uh, I, I forgot the other ones. Your, your what is it? Um, it'll come to me. Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshes and Tyres and the sons of Gomar, Ashkenaz and Raphael and Togomar. Now we getting over brothers and sisters to Germany and those areas, right? And the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish and Kitsum and Dodanum. It says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles. By these were the isles of the Gentiles. So what? Wait a minute. If you are a seed of Japheth, you are a Gentile. Right? If you are a Gentile, you can't be an African. If you are a Gentile, you can't be an Israelite. Because the, the term Gentile is only... Referring to the seed of Japheth. We just read it. Genesis 10 verses 2 through 5. So anyone that comes out of that continent of Europe, brothers and sisters, are Gentiles. All right. If you're from Germany, you're a Gentile. If you're from Italy, you're a Gentile. If you're from France, you're a Gentile. If you're from Russia, you're a Gentile. If you're from China, you're a Gentile. All those are Gentiles, brothers and sisters. But now let's deal with another song. 
Let's go to Ham. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim. That's the name of Egypt before it became Egypt. And Put and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Sheba, and Havilah, and Sapta, and Ramah, and Saptaka. And the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and, and um, Dadan. So now we got the Africans, brothers and sisters, off of what is originally called the land of Ham, but that's called Africa today. So anybody that comes from the seed of Ham or that is so-called African, brothers and sisters, are Hamites. So now we got two. We got Gentiles and we got Hamites. I'm going to say it again. We got Gentiles and we got Hamites. Let's go to verse 8. And Cush began, begat Nimrod. And he began to be a mighty one in the earth. So we all know about Nimrod that built the Tower of ba um, Babel. Babylon, brothers and sisters. Yes. All these were Hamites or what's called African today. But the question is. Did we come out of Africa and the nations of Africa? That's the question today, brothers and sisters. Let's go down to verse 20. These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Now what we got to do is we got to go to the Bible dictionary. You got two Bible dictionaries that are Consider the major Bible dictionary. You got Young's and then you got. Uh, let me see. Let's go to the Bible dictionary, brothers and sisters. So we're going to look this up. And. The Bible dictionary. Let's look this up, brothers and sisters, in the Bible Dictionary. And you can look it up in your Google search engine. Type in the word ham and then Bible Dictionary, okay? So when you get into ham and you get into the Bible Dictionary, let's see which one I'm going to read from. Zondervan Bible Dictionary, brothers and sisters. Keep that in mind. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. What we're going to do is we're going to read the definition of him according to the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Now, we already know that we're not Gentiles because one of the qualifications. We already know that we're not Gentiles because one of the qualifications of being Gentiles, brothers and sisters, is you have to be white or Caucasian and off of the land of Europe. Right. So we are not white. We're not Gentile and we don't come from the continent of Europe. So we are not seeds of Japheth or we are not Gentiles. The question is, are we Africans or descendants of Ham? You got your Babylonians. You got your Egyptians. You got Angola, you got Zimbabwe, you got Tanzania, you got Mozambique, you got Liberia, you got Ghana. Are we from one of those nations on the continent of Africa, a descendant of one of the African people? Let's, let's go to the Bible dictionary, the Zondervan Bible dictionary, and let's read what it says as far as Ham. We know that Ham is one of the other sons of Noah. We've already eliminated Japheth. Let's read the definition of Ham. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably around 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races. Uh-oh. Ham became the progenitor of the dark races. Well, we are dark. So the question is, is he the progenitor of us as well? Well, let's read it, read it again. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. 
D -d -d Wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to read that again. He became the progenitor of the dark racists, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Liberians, and the Canaanites. Come on, brothers and sisters. This is the type of information that we like to present to our brothers and sisters in the Bible class in which we teach. Because if we just said it, you would not believe us, brothers and sisters. But since it is in writing, and I'll show it to you right here. This is from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of the eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, Lib uh, Libyans, and Canaanites. So we know, brothers and sisters, that we're not of the seed of Japheth, nor are we of the seed of Ham. That only leaves one son left. And that is the seed of Shem, brothers and sisters. Let's go down. Let's go to Genesis 10 and 21. 10 and 21. And it says, Unto Shem also... The father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, Asher, Arphax, Lud, and Aram. And we're going to go ahead and skip down, brothers and sisters, just for the sake of time, to verses 31 and 32. Genesis 10, 31 and 32. These are the sons of Shem after their families after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. We're going somewhere, brothers and sisters. We started with Adam and Seth. We got all the way down to Noah. We went through Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and we landed on Shem. Remember Malcolm X said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Well, we landed in this lesson right on Shem. We couldn't land on Japheth because he's not us. We're not Gentiles. We couldn't land on Ham because we're not African. And this is why the African treats you so different because you are not his family member, brothers and sisters. I know, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Genesis, the 25th chapter. This is where the confusion comes in, brothers and sisters. The twin boys, Jacob and Esau, with the name Esau or Edom and Israel is first introduced into the Bible, brothers and sisters. This is where we begin to really dig deep into our research. We showed you where we were at before we got here. But now let's go here to the sons of Isaac. To the sons of Isaac. Let's go to the twin boys. Genesis 25, 20 through 34. Genesis 25, 20 through 34. And it reads... And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Pandanaram, the sister of Laban and Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because he, she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. 
and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So whoever comes out first is going to eventually serve the one that came out after, but they twins. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called him Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old. He was 60 years old when she gave birth to them, brothers and sisters. We got, let's, 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 let's take a moment. We got two children. We got Jacob and we got Esau. Remember, Esau came out first. So what did the Lord say? And the Lord cannot lie. He said the elder will serve the younger. But let's keep reading because we got to go down to 34. Verse 27. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau. What father don't love his firstborn? And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his Vincent. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Ain't that something? How the father normally gravitates towards the oldest child and the mother normally gravitates towards the younger child. That's even today how it is. Leave that boy alone. Let him be the baby. The father feels like the oldest is a little bit more independent, more like him. So he's favoring him. Verse 29. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him and sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So here you go. The oldest normally gets the birthright. But remember, the Lord already said that the elder is going to serve the younger. Now, there's a few things here, brothers and sisters, that we got to get deep into and that we got to analyze. This, again, leaves the lineage of Shem, and this is where we're going. We got all the way down to Abraham, Isaac, and now we into these twin boys, Jacob and Esau. Which one of the two do we come from? That's the interesting thing. Don't be confused, brothers and sisters. For a long time, I was confused. Why did Jacob go through these means to get the birthright? But the Lord had already predicted that the elder would serve the younger. But allow me to set the record straight, brothers and sisters. Concerning Jacob and all of these things, let's go to Genesis 27, 1 through 7. Genesis 27, and we're going to read Verses 1 through 7. And it reads. And it came to pass. That when Isaac was old. And his eyes were dim. So that he could not see. He called Esau his eldest son. And said unto him my son. And he said unto him behold here am I. And he said behold now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take I pray thee. Thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some Vincent and make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So his intentions is to bless Esau. But our intentions and God's intentions sometimes are two different things. Verse 5. 
And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for Vincent and to bring it. Remember, Rebekah was told by the Lord that Esau would serve Jacob. So Rebekah begins to take things into her own hands. Verse 6, And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau your brother, saying, Bring me Vincent and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the, before the Lord, before my death. So Rebecca is trying to intervene now so that Jacob could get the blessing instead of Esau. But remember, the Lord had already told her that the elder would serve the younger, that Esau would serve Jacob. She's trying to best her best to make what make happen what the Lord told her would come to pass. Let's go to verses 8 through 10. 27, Genesis 27, 8 through 10. It says, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father that he may eat and that he may bless you before his death. So this is how Jacob got the blessing, brothers and sisters. Number one, the Lord had already told his mother, Rebecca, that he would be the one that his brother would serve. Then number two, Rebecca goes and tries to fix it herself. Now, I don't know if the Lord approved of that or not. That's between her and the Lord. But what the Lord had told her came to pass. All right, so let's go down and see what exactly happened. Let's go to verses 19 and 23. Jacob is going to pretend to be his brother Esau. God already promised that the elder would serve the younger. Let's see how this came to pass. Genesis 27, 19 through 23. And it reads, And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. Jacob said unto his father, Jacob said, I'm Esau. He lying, brothers and sisters. I have done according to what you have uh, um, baddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison, that my soul may bless thee. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord, um, your God, brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel you. My son, whether you be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, Your voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy and his brother's Esau hands. So he blessed him. See, his mother had took some of uh, the fur and put it on him, brothers and sisters. She had really put this thing together, brothers and sisters, uh, so that he could pass for his brother Esau. So let's go back down at verse 24. It says, and he said, are you my son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him. And he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he did drink. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come now, come near now, kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God gave thee the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve you. And nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brother. That was the prophecy that the Lord gave Rebekah that the elder self shall serve the younger. Here it is coming to pass. Let people serve you, verse 29, 27 and 29 of Genesis. And the nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brother and let your mother's son bow down to you. Curse be everyone that curse you and bless be he that blesses you. So here it is, brothers and sisters. Jacob now has the blessing. 
But here's some issues that arose and some issues that took place. Let's go ahead and read it. Let's go down. Let's go to verse 30. It says, And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of the blessing, blessing Jacob, Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from the hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that has taken the venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before you came and have blessed him. Yeah, he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me. Also, O oh my father. And he said, Your brother came with subtility and has taken away thy blessing. So now Jacob has the blessing. Let's go down to 41. And Esau hated Jacob still today. Esau hates Jacob to this day. It says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I kill my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, your brother Esau, as touching thee, does comfort himself, purpose, purpur, purposing to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee thou to Laban, my, my brother, to Haran. So now, Jacob's trying to get out of Dodge. Esau is angry. Esau is seeking to kill him, brothers and sisters. Now, let's find out what happens to Jacob after this. Now we get into the introduction of Israel. Israel did not exist before this. Isaac was not an Israelite. Abraham was not an Israelite. Shem, who Abraham came from, was not an Israelite. OK, now Abraham was a Hebrew. So that means that Ishmael, his firstborn, the Arabs, they are Hebrews. Isaac is also a Hebrew and Esau is also a Hebrew. They are wondrous. But they are not Israelites because Israelite or Israel did not exist at this time. Let's go to the introduction of Israel in the Bible. The first time the name is mentioned. And how it came into existence. Let's go to Genesis the 32nd chapter. Verses 1 and 2. Remember Esau wants to kill Jacob his brother. He's upset with him. Let's go to Genesis 32 verses 1 and 2. And it says. And Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them. He said this is God's host. And he called the name of that place. Mahanam, right? Now, for the sake of time, we're going to go down to verses 24 through 28. Genesis 32, 24 through 28. And it reads, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And we know that this was an angel, brothers and sisters. And when he saw that he prevailed not against them, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaker. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel, for as a prince, thou hast power with God with men and has prevailed. For the first time in the Bible, at Genesis 32, verse 28, 
the name Israel is introduced in the Bible. And so if you are a descendant of Jacob, who had 12 sons, these are the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. Jacob, Israel, same person. But the angel said, your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. So brothers and sisters, we have gone all the way to the introduction of Israel. So now that we know that Israel exists according to the Bible and who Israel comes from. So that means that Jacob was both a Hebrew and an Israelite. So when you hear people say, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, then that means they are descendants of Abraham and Jacob. But there are other people that are descendants of Abraham. The Edomites or Esau is a descendant of, descendant of Abraham. They're Hebrews. The Arabs, because Ishmael was his firstborn. They are descendants of Abraham, so they are Hebrews, but you cannot be an Israelite unless you are a descendant of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So now that we have gone from Adam and Seth all the way to Israel, next week, we got to go through those 12 tribes, brothers and sisters, and we got to find out how the African American identifies with Israel, according to this book right here called the Bible, because this Bible has signs, it has markers, and it has identifying features to identify who Israel is today. This book is the book of the Israelites, brothers and sisters. So let's go deep into this book. Let's read it and let's find out the condition that Israel is supposed to be in today. Are we supposed to be in our own country? Are we supposed to be running our own country? Because there are a people that call themselves Israel today. And Jews that are running Israel today, brothers and sisters. But the question we need to ask is, are they the Israelites of this Bible? There is another people that came out of Germany that were being killed in what was called the Holocaust by Hitler and the German army, and they called themselves Jews. We got to analyze that, brothers and sisters. Are they the Israelites of this Bible? So we got a lot of things to discuss next week. So be here. Same bat time, same bat channel. As we go into part two of identity theft. The true identity of the so-called African Americans. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Thank you for your time. Now, for those who are on YouTube, hit that subscribe button right there. It's going to get deeper. It's going to get better next week, I promise you. Also, if you have a Facebook page, then we go live. You can watch us live and comment as the lesson is going on. Go and like our Facebook page, which is called The Truth Hour Bible Class. Now, for those who are on Facebook and you are tuned in to The Truth Hour Bible Class, and you got a YouTube channel, then please go and like our YouTube channel. It's called Truth Hour TV. Again, Truth Hour TV. Have you ever been taught this in your black history class in school? No, because the only thing that they can do is go to the west coast of Africa where the slave ships arrived, and that's the furthest that they can go. But we got something deep for you next week, brothers and sisters. We're going to bring it all out. And I can't wait to bring it out, brothers and sisters. I'm excited. And uh, I want to show you something. This right here is a list of some of the slave names. And this is just the letter A. And this is not a, even all of the letter A. These are the slaves that were on the ships. I want you to read these names. All these Hebrew names, brothers and sisters. 
ending in Y-A-H. Look at these Hebrew names. You got the name of the slave. You got how old they were. You got the name of the slave. You got how old they were. You got what ship they come from. Look at that, brothers and sisters. All These are the slaves with Israelite names, brothers and sisters. You got the voyage that they came on. You got the gender. You got the age. You got the name of the ship that they were on. We're going to bring it out next week, brothers and sisters. You really want to know our history, where we come from? You really want to know our history? We got the slave logs, brothers and sisters. The names of the slaves, the ships that they were on, the voyage that they took. And it's ironic that they got Hebrew names at the end, ending in Y-A-H. Why is that? Well, we're going to learn next week. We're going to study this book, show you how we got into slavery. How do we go from God's chosen people to slaves in the bottom of the totem pole? Tune in next week, brothers and sisters. We're going deep. We Matter of fact, bring your scuba equipment next week because we're going deep sea diving next week. Bring your scuba equipment and bring your Bible, brothers and sisters. <laughs> With that being said, again, if you are on YouTube, like our Facebook channel, which is the Truth Hour Bible Class, and we just put the Truth Hour um, YouTube information in the comment section. If you would like to be added to our text message invite reminder list, which means that right before we go on the air, you'll get a text message reminding you and what the lesson is for that particular week. Text your name and the keywords Truth Hour to 312-719-7310. Again, 312 312- 719-7310. All right. Also, if you would like to be a member of our ministry, Truth Hour Ministries, then you see that person that commented right there with the with the gold and orange, the Truth Hour Bible class. Comment under that comment and say, hey, I want to be a part of that ministry. What y'all doing is good work over there. I want to learn this stuff and I want to help get this word out. And I want to invite people and share the lesson. I want to help advance this ministry in the word of God. Because we need you, brothers and sisters. This is 2022. God ain't playing no games. This thing is moving real fast. And you need to be able to account for your works. Because Revelation is the 20th. Um, chapter says that you're going to be judged according to your works, brothers and sisters. And faith without works is what? Is dead. You know God. You say you love him. But what are you doing to advance his ministry? You could be helping us, brothers and sisters, a part of this ministry. Just sharing the lessons on Tuesday. Inviting people to join in. Inboxing people. That's part of your ministry and part of your work. And it has nothing to do with where you go physically to attend Sabbath day. And also, if you are in the Chicagoland area, please join us. I invite you to attend the Sabbath day class with us. Every Saturday at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Riverdale, brothers and sisters, 138th, right off of Halstead. Get in contact with me at that same number, that 312-719, and say, Brother Black Eyes, I want to go to Bible class with you. On the Sabbath day, this Saturday. Brother Duncan has already, Duncan Ellington, who's on listening and watching, he has already committed that he wants to start coming to Bible class. He has already started. He was there this past Sabbath. Y'all saw him on my live. And he'll be there this Sabbath, brothers and sisters, when we go live again after Bible class. So we thank you for your time. We're going to stand up, face Jerusalem. This lesson will be on YouTube in about 20 minutes after the live feed goes out. So let's stand up and face Jerusalem, brothers and sisters. And if you like this lesson, leave it in the comments section because I do go back and read the comments and I would like to know what you thought about today's lesson. All right. Oh, and this shirt says, I am an Israelite, the chosen of God. Next week, you're going to find out why I say that. All right. Father God in heaven, we come before you. We, we say thank you, Father God. This energy on tonight's lesson, Father God, I... I was so excited, Father God. I don't even think I sniffled one time, nose ran or anything, Father God. 
And I thank you and I bless you for that, Father God. Father God, bless you, Father God, for everybody who tuned in, who watched, who shared, who invited people to this lesson tonight. I say thank you, Father God. We love you, Father God. We want to walk in your way and we, we ask that you help us move closer towards learning your word and applying that word to our life, Father God. Father God, we want to know who we are. We want to know whose we are. We want to know our history, Father God. We want to know where we come from. So we thank you for putting it in your words so that we can research and find that information, Father God. And once we know that we are the only family that you have ever known, Father God, and that your statutes, laws, and commandments apply to us, then many may know that we ought to keep what you have given us to keep, Father God. We pray this prayer. We say thank you. We pray that those who watched and heard were edified, and we pray that you were glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, look for it on YouTube in about 20 minutes and please continue to share this lesson. You got a whole week to share part one before we even get into part two. Oh, and let me say this. My wife and I has de have decided. Don't go nowhere. Just hold on. I know y'all just hold on. Just give me 60 more seconds. My wife and I have decided that we are going to do 30 days. No fried food, no sugar, no bread, and it was something else that she said. No white bread, no bread, no um, sugar, no fried food, and there's one other thing. But um, who wants to get on this with me, brothers and sisters? Let's do this for 30 days. Let's get our health together. Right? I know you got to get your mind right, so you got tonight to get your mind right. And let's do this thing, brothers and sisters. Let's get our bodies and our temple. This is the temple of God. Let's get this in the best shape that we can get it in. Last thing, I need y'all to vote for me, brothers and sisters. Please vote for your brother. I am nominated for a Chicago Music Award for Best Spoken Word Poet. And um, by the grace of God, I will be blessed to bring it home to the Truth Hour family. So here's the link. I just put it right up in the comment section. And you can go and vote, brothers and sisters, for your brother. Get your family members and your friends to go and vote for me. You don't have to vote for all the categories, but I'm asking you for your vote. I need your vote. I want to take home this award, brothers and sisters. I've worked so hard. And um, yes, brothers and sisters. So thank you guys so much. Peace and blessings to each and um, one of you. In Jesus' Yeshua name.